until they fucked it. Ooh. They're like spilled. Hello and welcome to whatever this is supposed to be. I have no earthly idea what I'm doing. Can you tell? I have now rambled for like five minutes before. This is probably, you probably won't see it, but I rambled five minutes before saying a whole lot of nothing and not knowing what to say. Um, welcome to my dungeon. I literally have unfinished walls behind me. And the nicest thing in my possession is a Samsung 50-inch TV. That's about the nicest thing that I could put in frame. Because anything on this side of the room is about a million times worse than this Samsung 50-inch TV. So, uh, that's my, welcome to my life. So, now that NASCAR decided to become irrelevant, pretty much in the mostly public eye, I, who live now in a northern state, am now going to try and make a semi, a semi-relevant YouTube channel talking about NASCAR. Good luck. I'm going to try and keep it fun and very non-serious. Just so everybody knows and understands the thing that I, the things, fuck, the things that I say in these YouTube videos, I do not mean. They are a thing called jokes. So people may think that I'm just so terrible at telling jokes that they'll take them seriously. And that's fine, but... Just know that my intentions are, are that everything I say are pretty much jokes. Now, I'm saying this now so that anything I say in the future, I can just claim it as a joke no matter what. And that gives me a force field around me. NASCAR returns on February 5th at the Bush Light Class f fucking Coliseum. I still would like to call it a shootout, but we can't say shootout because somebody might shoot out the Coliseum into space in a video game. So NASCAR went ahead and they announced that they're going back to the LA Coliseum for the clash yet again a while back. And now on February 5th, they'll be doing the event for the second time in its history. Hopefully the last, I watched the last LA Coliseum race. And as I said, Pitbull performed, you saw, a couple wrecks, some interesting stuff. Justin Haley got wrecked by Kyle Larson, and Joey Logano won. Anytime that Joey Logano wins something, it's an automatic downer. I'm sorry to anybody who's a Joey Logano fan, but anybody who has hair like this, sorry, used to have hair like this, who wears glasses... I don't know how you could be a fan of that guy, of that guy, but now he won a championship, and now he has money again, so he can buy new hair. So Joey Logano won last year's clash as he won last year's championship. This year, I don't know what to expect. I expect the L.A. Coliseum to be bad again. There are some interesting people performing, and I won't watch them because. Even as a racing fan, I don't care about who performs live in any way, shape, or form. I know Wiz Khalifa, some other country band who's going to play Life is a Highway, is going to probably play. I know Joey Logano will probably win again, LOL. And no one will care because the clash is now meaningless. To me, I'm old school in a lot of the ways that I think. And personally, I look at The Clash and I always think it should be at a big stage where I can watch Carnage because that's all I care about. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the Bush Light Clash is a stupid-ass race that I hate now. See, I'm an old soul and I like older racing. And by older racing, I mean races in 2005, because I was born in 2000. I like it when it was called the shootout. Preferably over the 
Sprint Unlimited or The Clash or Happy Fun Time. I don't know what the fuck else it was called. It was called The Shootout. It used to be called The Budweiser Shootout, and it was fun then because all the racers did there was peel labels off of old beer cans that were empty, unfortunately, and they got their qualifying numbers then. Then they went out and raced on the big track, the big boy track, went really fast, wrecked all their cars usually, and one guy won a little bit of money. I don't think he won a million dollars. The winner of the 2010 Budweiser shootout will win a handsome check totaling $200,000. Not quite a million, but still a good chunk of change. At least they'll make enough money to where they can take that amount of money and be able to purchase enough parts to repair the car to about 50%. The Bushlight Clash is now a poopy poopy race because it's at a really short track instead of a really big track. Last year's race was terrible and then they tried to tell us all that it was great. And then if you watched Pitbull perform, then you realized it was terrible because any time that you tried to have a camera shot in this entire arena, when they showed Pitbull, they showed like a bunch of like extras that they pretty much paid to stand there and like dance to Pitbull and like 40 year old moms who are the only people who remember Pitbull now. And then you had like a bunch of empty stadium. I understand that people like Ben Kennedy want to sit there and tell us that, Oh, we have such a giant market of fans in the Los Angeles area that is untapped. And so what we do is we go to the Coliseum for the biggest weirdo race on the planet and try and race on a stadium, a football stadium, with race cars. Who is running this sport? A five-year-old? These are the type of decisions that, like, eight-year-old me would do. If I was eight years old... And I was sitting there, and I had complete control over anything that NASCAR chose to do. I would do the most random shit on the planet. Because I would think that that's entertaining. As an 8-year-old. Not as a 30-some-year-old adult. Like, 8-year-old me would say, Why don't we take race cars and put them in a football stadium and try and race them on a football stadium? Or why don't we take our race cars and go race on the real streets like they do at Need for Speed? Oh, wait. We're doing that too. Except they picked the one state, the one city and the one state where you're most likely to get shot. Anyways, a lot of changes have happened during the off season. So Cole Custer got kicked out of his ride because he was terrible and couldn't draw any sort of sponsorship. So because NASCAR is so reliant on trying to find drivers who will get any sort of sponsorship attention, 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 they give an attempt to them. So I combined the words to try and save time. But now I've realized I've wasted a lot of time. So NASCAR is now so desperate for drivers that actually have some sort of sponsorship or money to their name that they will just give them anything in an attempt to try and make any sort of money back so they aren't sitting there losing hand over fist types of money every single week of every single month of every single season of every single year. So that is why now Ryan Priest gets an opportunity in the 41 car in the Cup Series. Somebody who in truthfulness has not proven to really do much. He's pretty good on short tracks, but outside of that, I haven't seen too much success. Granted, he spent a lot of time last season driving the 15 car for Rick Rick Ware Racing, 
which is basically the glorified caution whenever NASCAR needs one and doesn't have one designated to happen on a certain lap. So now Ryan Priest will be taking over for Cole Custer in the 41 car. I don't even know what sponsorships he has bringing in, but he's going to be doing that. Speaking of Bush and speaking of Stuart Haas, though, Kevin Harvick is leaving NASCAR finally. Thank God. But Kevin Harvick is now spending his last season in a goodbye. The video that he showed on Twitter and Stuart Haas Racing showed on Twitter was so dramatic and just weird because they tried to make it seem like this is some generational talent who is leaving. But truth be told, he only had one good year and he spent a lot of time underwhelming a lot of people. To replace him will probably be Hallie Deegan because she is, again, one of the only small, relevant people in the lower series left of NASCAR. If you ask me, I would replace him with an orange. Or maybe Cole Custer. Probably Cole Custer. But Cole Custer this year will spend the entire year in Xfinity Series actually learning less than he probably would be learning if he was in a cup car. So maybe it's probably better if Cole Custer just sits on an iRacing sim rig for the next 36-some weeks and tries to learn the cup car so he can actually be decent. Kevin Harvick is gone. Kurt Busch is now gone. Pitbull is not coming back to perform again. The L.A. Coliseum is in a couple of weeks. And NASCAR just came off of its best season ever. You know, I didn't make a video on last season, but I'm just going to quickly sum up last season. Amazing. You know, remember that weird campaign that Fox had where they kept showing commercials of promoting the NASCAR races for the ne for the next Sunday? And it was before they came out with the next-gen car. I think it was that last season of the Gen 6 car where Fox kept saying... This NASCAR season might just be the greatest season of all time. Like, ever. It was better than any season ever in history. Was that season. Even though, funny enough, looking back, it was one of the worst seasons I remember watching of all time. It was awful. So... <laughs> Last season was actually the best season ever. You had s like 19 different winners. We got to see guys like Eric Jones go to victory lane with Richard Petty Motorsports, which is now Petty GMS, which is now Legacy MC. Which leads me to now roast the living shit out of this terrible name. Legacy MC is now the triple head of Petty, GMS, and Jimmy Johnson. Because Jim, 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 Jimmy Boy tried his hand at IndyCar and took a fat L. Meanwhile, guys like Juan Pablo Montoya came over from Open Wheel Racing, came to NASCAR, and actually won a race. Marcus Ambrose came over and actually won a race. Travis Pastrada came over and didn't do well. But he's trying again. He's trying again. This time, we'll probably end the same. But Jimmy Johnson came back to NASCAR because he got his ass kicked in IndyCar and now chose to buy a team. Because he saw somebody else do it and not do well. So he thought, I'm going to try that too. So Jimmy Johnson is now back in NASCAR. We can now rejoice the world is back in alignment and we are no longer in bizarro world. So Jimmy Johnson is now going to be racing the 84 car for Legacy Motor Club. Now, I don't know about you, but... I've seen plenty of teams named Motorsports or Racing at the end of their name. You know, Hendrick Motorsports 
Joe Gibbs Racing, Roush Fenway Racing, which is now Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing, RCR, which is Richard Childress Racing. You know, I've seen many different ending parts of their specific names. But Motor Club is too open wheel for me. I think that the name should be changed to Richard Petty, GMS, Jimmy Johnson, Motorsports. That acronym is amazing. And that fits the current climate of NASCAR because every other team has either racing or motorsports at the end of their name. Not Motor Club. Better yet, they didn't go to like a NASCAR team name generator, type in Google, ask it to give us a name, and then just say Legacy. Legacy is one of the most generic names I have heard for a race team in a very, very long time. If you go back to like NASCAR heat days, when NASCAR games were functional, there was a team that was called like Goldmine Racing. That has more character than Legacy Motor Club, a real NASCAR name. These guys went on the Today Show and were like so proud of this name. They sat there with Al Roker, I think his name, Al Roker. I haven't watched the Today Show in like 12 years. They sat there and were so proud of this name. Legacy Motor Club. And the... (laughs) The fact that they sat there and were like, this is a good name. We're proud of this name. Legacy is a good representation for us because we've made a lot of legacy in NASCAR. we're, We're Legacy. We're Legacy Motor Club, the LMC. (laughs) LMC is a cooler name than Legacy Motor Club. They should have just called themselves the LMC. They could have came out with a bunch of rappers, and that could have been their gimmick. They could have came out with something so much better. My suggestion is actually cool and actually has relevance. I saw somebody on Twitter say something about, like, why not just, like, seven-time racing or seven-time motorsports? Funny enough, I'd rather take that over Legacy Motor Club because at least seven-time has relevance. Although GMS hasn't done anything seven times in its existence, I don't even think they've won seven races. So in conclusion... Going into 2023, Cole Custer is out of a ride and is back in the Xfinity Series to be the only semi-relevant person there now. Ryan Priest replaced him in the 41 to do about the equal amount of things as Cole Custer did in his career. Kevin Harvick is now leaving, and the Bush Light Clash will never be the same. The Bush Light Clash is now not the same because we're still going back to the football field as a racetrack. Jimmy Johnson is back in racing for the Legacy Motor Club, the LMC, and we just came off of the greatest season in NASCAR history. 2023 is doomed. And soon, hopefully by February 5th, I'll be out of this dungeon. And I'll have some type of direction in my life. Goodbye. I'm a true American NASCAR fan. I'm sitting in my death dungeon. Where I kill and mutilate people. My fucking dog is sitting here. Can't sit still. Not my dog. I stole this dog from somebody. And I'm drinking a monster. How much more NASCAR American can you get? (laughs) 